Hello, my friends. Hello, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. How are you all doing today? So this is going to be all about ascension. And ascension to me is ultimately one of the very most important things, if not the single most important topic we could talk about. Because everything we're looking at in regards to all the earth changes going on, ultimately they're all symptoms of ascension. And what is ascension? Well, ascension is basically the rising up from third dimensional existence into a higher realm going up through the dimensions and as Tesla had spoken about so many times basically everything is energy and as Einstein said energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only change forms and when you're thinking about the mysteries of the universe think in terms of frequency and vibration because everything is energy vibrating at different rates, at different frequencies, at different vibratory rates. And so right now we have been existing in what we call the third and the fourth dimensions. And so those dimensions are where our consciousness has been located primarily. You can reach higher dimensions through deep states of meditation and you could touch on it such as you know what buddha touched on the realization of the great oneness behind it all but if you don't have years to spend in deep meditation and the discipline to do that as he did the, at the bodhi tree it could be something that is just slightly out of reach but we are living in special times and the earth itself is ascending and so we must realize also everything is energy everything is energy vibrating at certain rates and frequencies and ultimately everything is consciousness and so energy and consciousness also go hand in hand and i know we don't see that in our 3d minds so easily but it is a truth and so earth is a living being just like you and I are and the earth is going through a period of basically purgation and cleansing itself of lower energies in order to ascend into a new higher vibratory rate and so if we are to go with the earth and ascend into this higher vibratory rate we must also purge ourselves and cleanse ourselves of these lower energies and really the key to that lies in our emotions the control of the emotions and the control of the mind and really we have to just simply work on cultivating certain beneficial emotions and learning how to let go it, so much of this process is going to be all about letting go and you know we really we really have been given a difficult task given that as we are born into this world we are we are indoctrinated and conditioned and i've spoken about this many many times but it's true we're brainwashed as soon as you're born and brought into this world you are conditioned you are brainwashed you are basically damaged intentionally and forced to accept a very limiting way of thinking in most cultures very few cultures in our world this day have been uh, outside of the system the system of control that the, this matrix grid of control that we have found ourselves in and so we must first understand exactly what is reality exactly who we are what are we where are we now where have we been where are we going these are all things to think about as we make the journey up and through the different dimensions the key to growth is the introduction of higher dimensions of consciousness into our awareness and that's Lao Tzu and you know that's over 2,000 years old from a brilliant mind 
So one of the things that I'm going to encourage everybody to do is to, you know, get out of your own culture and explore other cultures. Get out of your own traditions and explore others' traditions. Really what we are stepping into is understanding the underlying unity of things. And so it's not about conforming. Not at all. You know, quite the opposite. It's more about accepting accepting each other, embracing our differences, and just celebrating those differences, enjoying those differences. And perhaps it's a little easier to do that when we understand that really under it all, this is all basically a world of maya and illusion. That is what Buddha discovered from going seriously within, deep within. And Buddha realized that ultimately there is only one. And that one is Source. And we are all a part of Source. We are not separate from Source. We, we are individual sparks of the same fire. And so it's hard in this dualistic world, this 3D world of apparent opposites light and dark, yin and yang, male, female, positive, negative. We could break it down into Democrat, Republican, conservative, fundamentalist, and, and liberal. You know, we could break it down to all these different labels for the dualities that we see. But we must realize that underneath it all, underlying it all, is a unifying consciousness. One singular consciousness of which we are all just a wave in the ocean. And when we realize that, we tap into unlimited potential, unlimited power, unlimited love. So when we look at the layers of the body, so many people don't realize how many layers there are to a human being. There's the physical body, obviously. There's the etheric body. And the etheric body exists before the physical body. The etheric body is the blueprint of the physical body. So when the sperm and the egg unite and start dividing, they're following the template of the etheric body. That template is there before the physical body. And when the physical body dissolves, then the etheric body starts to dissolve after the physical body. Now, after the etheric body, which when you look at it, it tends to look like a clear energy. It looks like heat coming off of a hot pavement, just a clear wavy energy. Then we get into the astral body, which leads us into the emotional body. Now, when we're sleeping, we're in the uh, astral body and going into the astral plane. And so when we're sleeping, we're fully in the fourth dimension of consciousness. And as you could see, the, the, when you're dreaming, it's a lot more fluid than the physical dimension. The physical dimension's solid. And yet, there are other dimensions below the third as well, like, this, like 2D and 1D, which are more like the elemental realms that are actually like the foundation blocks upon which the third dimension is built. And so when we sleep, we go up into the fourth dimension, which is, you know, in the astral body and the emotional body. And that is a dimension where we can manifest things so much quicker. And so our reality now is shifting more into that 4D reality. As we could see, because many of you probably have seen some of your comments, and I know I've experienced it too. It's so easy to manifest things now. So we have to be really guarded and aware of our thoughts and our intentions because we could manifest positive things or we can manifest negative things much faster now than we could have before because everything is quickening the vibratory rates are quickening we ourselves are quickening we're going to shed this third dimensional body one way or another that's that's coming and that's going to happen so this shell that you're in is going to just it's going to disappear in one way or another. And we're going to move up dimensionally 
actually into the fifth dimension. So we're going to no longer be trapped in the third and fourth dimensions. And we're going to live in what's more of a unity consciousness, which is up in the spiritual planes where the higher self resides. Think of this as, in, in so many ways, <laughs> our, our video games give us clues to reality because just as you play a video game, that's basically what your higher self is doing with this incarnation. You're, you're coming into the 3D world and this body is your vehicle that you have made so that you can enjoy the 3D world and learn from the 3D world. Experience it. This is, this is the vehicle we use for that. And then when we pass on, we basically just exist more in that fourth dimension until a new body is formed with a, another etheric blueprint and come back down into the third dimension again. And we've been basically in this loop for many, many cycles, some of us incarnating thousands and thousands of times. And so this is a situation that doesn't come along all the time. The, the ascension is a big event, and that's something that's, that's been talked of in many, many different traditions. Behold, I shall show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15.51 and it's hinted at in the Bible and, and we saw Jesus after he came back in his light body and he was able to eat and drink and enjoy himself but he didn't have to and it looked like him but at the same time it seemed different because it was a different body it was a light body it was changed and in Tibet with the Buddhist practice and, and the depth of meditation that they do in Buddhism and also in many forms of Hinduism as well as many of the native indigenous peoples of the world, uh, they achieve something here in Tibet called the rainbow body, which is the ultimate fruition of all practices. It's a body of pure light. And many, thousands and thousands of monks, tens of thousands of monks have done this. And they've initiated their own personal ascension. And they've done it through meditation. And given the techniques and the dedication, that's something we could do. Many, many people could do this. If you learn how to purge the lower emotions from yourself. And so this, this, this photo was taken in 2011 for the rainbow body of Chogyur Lingpa Rinpoche. And uh, many, many, many of these Buddhist monks ascend into the rainbow body and this is something that's talked about in the Kabbalah too as the Merkaba which is our light vehicle our light body so this is Deepak Chopra there has been a revolution in how we perceive the body what appears to be an object a three-dimensional anatomical structure is actually a process a constant flow of energy and information so it's just simply our brains that make these things appear the way they do. Yes, we are a carbon-based life form. And that is where we are at in this 3D reality. But our DNA is changing. And we are changing into basically crystalline-based life forms. And, and that is so that we could hold more light. And light is knowledge, gnosis. And so the Gnostic tradition, which was so persecuted, by the early Catholic Church. Um, you know, Gnosis is something that's finding a resurgency again, and knowledge. And so we're looking at DNA, and, and DNA is mutating. DNA does mutate, and scientists and doctors will, will always view it in a scary sense. But there's more than just the scary sense DNA mutations going on. You know, it's, when we say scary, we're talking like cancers and things like that. With all the energy that is coming into us now, just as the statement in Corinthians is talking about, we are all going to be changed. We are all going to be changed. Every single one of us, in one way or another, is going to be changed. The cosmic rays that are coming in now, that are increasing every day, UVC being measured at ground level, 
are showing us that everything is changing. And what I want to say to you is don't fear it because this is happening one way or another and regardless. It, it's part of our fate. It's part of our destiny. Does that mean that we're all going to die and there's like, it's hopeless? No. Because ultimately what we're going to do is transform into a new world and transform into a completely different way of living and life. And there's another quote from the Bible which I didn't pull out and it talks about lo death where is your sting because it is no more and that whole old way of life the old you know i looked and i saw the old earth and the old heavens and they had passed away and so that is what we're talking about and that is the times that we are living in yes the 3d reality is it's it's breaking down all around us we're seeing it we're seeing the great changes that have been talked about forever in all traditions it's not just one tradition yeah sure it is in the bible it's in revelations and it's in many other parts isaiah and daniel and ezekiel a lot of the minor prophets we could go to the pseudepigrapha and find things as well but you could also find these things also in the nag hammadi and the gnostic scriptures and you could find references through many of the buddhist texts and the hindu texts and, and many other texts and holy books and in the Native American traditions, the Aboriginal traditions as well, the, mes the Western mystery traditions. You could, you could hear about it in the Kabbalah. This is universal. You know, there's not one philosophy that has you know, all the answers. We need to look at all of them because these things have been spoken about in all cultures, in all languages, in all traditions. This is something that is universal, and it's bigger than just this planet as well. Humans mutating to 12 DNA strands. There are major changes and mutations occurring in our DNA. We are evolving. We will be developing 12 helixes during this time, which seems to have started maybe 5 to 20 years ago. We have been mutating. It's a mutation of our species into something from which the end result is not yet known. Dr. Brenda Fox, scientists finally present evidence on expanding DNA strands. And it's been documented with um, this one boy with uh, three DNA strands, and then there has been document, documentation on other cases as well. Um, now he died, and, and some think suspiciously, as if they, want, they didn't want him to make it. Um, we know that there's always cover-ups. We know that they're always trying to hide the truth from us because realize that the people in power don't want us evolving. They like the status quo. They, they are not going up into higher dimensions if they hold just simply their own self-interests. If they don't embody service to others, service to others is one of the key things to going up and ascending. Realizing what is your ego and what is your higher self? We must shed the lower energies. It's all about shedding the lower energies. So if you guys heard my video from a day ago or so, I was talking about the Yuan Shen as far as uh, the Taoist philosophy. Yuan Shen is basically our eternal soul. It's this spark. It's the Atman of the Hindu philosophy. It's, it's what is really us going back to incorporation with the Godhead. It's, it's our little spark of source, you know, that is our unique flame, our unique vibrational signature. And then the, we have what's called the three po in the Taoist tradition and in medical qigong. And, and the three po are like three guardian angels or three spirit guides that are with us. And they are always giving us good information, always trying to keep us going in the best direction possible. And they want us to... to live our highest purpose for this life. They are not really us, but they are with us our entire life and our entire incarnation. They're kind of like incarnational coaches. Then there are the seven Po, and the seven Po are earth spirits. And not that the earth is, 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 is dark or anything like that or negative. It's just earthly. It's three-dimensional. And so the earth itself is shedding its three-dimensionality and it's going up into the fifth dimension. So these lower energies, the, the seven Po, which are of the earthly three-dimensional reign, they equate to the, the seven deadly sins and things like envy and greed and jealousy and anger, hatred, bigotry, 
Um, basically, you know, anything that ultimately is going to keep us out of service to others and into an ego-based life. So that is what they are all about. And that is what we are purging and getting rid of. That side of us is, is being transformed. Now the Taoist legends talk about immortals. And what are these immortals? Because there are immortals in Taoist legends. And, and they even talk also about a time when man, humans, were just like the gods. We had the power of the gods, each of us. We were able to fly, we were able to do things at will, we were able to perform miracles. And that was all changed by basically blocking off our chakras and dropping us down into this 3D reality we find ourselves in. So we were basically, we had our wings clipped, so to speak. And that time is changing now. And now it's time for us to ascend back up and to realize who and what we actually are. Uh, we are multidimensional beings that have unlimited potential. And so this is an article by Dr. Brenda Fox talking about evidence of DNA and cellular changes. And it, it's very, very fascinating. And, you know, as the question says here, what are the changes that are happening at this time on the planet? How are our bodies being affected? Dr. Fox says there are major changes, mutations that haven't occurred according to geneticists since the time we supposedly came out of water. Several years ago in Mexico City, there was a convention of geneticists from around the world. The main topic was the DNA change. We are making an evolutionary change that we do not know what we are changing into. And this is my whole thoughts originally behind evolutionary energy arts. That's why it is evolutionary energy arts because I want to teach you guys and show you guys the way to change, the way we can change and what we can become, the pathway to ascension. That is ultimately what this is all about. How is our DNA changing? Everyone has one double helix of DNA. What we are finding is that there are other helixes that are being formed. In the double helix, there are two strands of DNA coiled into a spiral. It is my understanding that we'll be developing 12 helixes. During this time, there seems to have started maybe 5 or 20 years ago. We have been mutating. This is, that is the scientific explanation. It's a mutation of our species into something for which the end result is not yet known. Back around 1987, I read an article that talked about us going into what's called the photon belt. And I remember thinking that it sounded really woo-woo. It was interesting. I was curious. And that was the first thing I ever heard about Ascension. And that was over 30 years ago now. And uh, slowly but surely, I started to get on board with the thought of the Ascension process and what Ascension was and is. And, and I do see now that as we've gone through this time, everything that was talked about is proving to be true. It's proving to be right on. And so I feel very, very sure about all these things. So these changes are not known publicly because the scientific community feels it would frighten the population. However, people are changing at a cellular level. I am working with three children right now who have three DNA helixes. Most people know and feel this. Many religions have talked about the change and know it will come in different ways. We know it's a positive mutation even though physically, mentally, and emotionally it can be misunderstood and frightening. Are these children displaying any different characteristics than other children? These are children that can move objects across the room just by concentrating on them, or they can fill glasses of water just by looking at them. They're telepathic. You would almost think by knowing these children that they're half angelic or superhuman, but they're not. I think they are what we are growing into during the next few decades. Do you think this will happen to all of us? It seems like most people who were born before 1940 have not been able to make the shift but have initiated something into the next generation that gives them the capacity to form another helix within our lifetime. Our immune and endocrine systems are the most evident of these changes. This is one of the reasons I work with immuno immunological testing and therapy. Some adults that I've tested actually do have another DNA helix forming. Some are even getting their third. These people are going through a lot of major shifts in their consciousness and physical bodies because it is all one. In my opinion, the earth and everyone here is raising in vibration. Many of the children born recently have bodies that are magnetically lighter. 
Those of us that are older and choose to change have to go through many physical changes. And I'll have all the links for you guys as well. So as we know, when we sleep, we actually rise up in our astral body and go into fourth dimension, the 4D. And this whole process and the whole way of our being is going to change. And as we see, we have the physical body, the etheric body, the astral body, the emotional body, causal body, mental body, spiritual or soul body, and then the Buddhic or Christic body. And that's part of the whole message of Christ, because Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And exactly what he showed and what he demonstrated is exactly what we need to do and become in order to raise up in vibration. He gave us the pattern. He, gave, he, he showed us the way. So, you know, it's not that we are... He never said, worship me. When did he ever say, get down on your knees and worship me? He never did. So what has the dark side done? They've gotten us distracted from listening to the mes message and they got us creating dogmas so that we'll argue with each other all day long. He came to show us the way and he did show us the way. As did Buddha. They both showed us the way. And so Buddha and the Christ you know, were bringing the, the knowledge of ascension to us all. One in the Middle East and one in the Far East. And they have both given us the path. And it's all done through compassion, through love, through the higher energies. We must shed those lower vibrational frequencies and must become more like Christ and like Buddha because that is the pathway to ascension. Dogma is man-made. Dogma comes from ego. Dogma, dogma is nothing but ego-based. You know, thinking that I have the only true way, that is just the ego speaking, and that's 3D, lower vibrational speaking that will keep you locked into a 3D existence and not let you move up to the higher realms because when you're doing that and saying that, you're condemning others and you're judging. And when you're judging, then you cause yourself to be judged. And so then it becomes this karmic backlash that will keep you trapped in a third dimensional world. And so is everybody going to ascend into light bodies and escape this world without perhaps even dying? No, I, because a lot of people are not ready to give up the lower vibrations. So as the earth changes come, the, the greatest thing we could do is to give up the lower vibrations. Because we will ascend, and we will ascend into what's going to look like just a better version of this, this planet that we're on now. But it's going to have a, a, a different glow to it, a different energy to it. It's going to be a place of peace, and a place of, of brotherhood and sisterhood, uh, where the lion and the lamb lie down together. Will everybody experience that? No, because not everybody's going to be able to ascend now. Too many are still tied into the lower vibrational frequencies. So in that case, those people will probably experience the worst of the earth changes. And so we, that is the most imperative thing that we could do right now, is really our own self-work. Working on yourself, getting rid of the lower vibrational frequencies, any sorts of judgments any sorts of negativity, any sorts of condemnation, what we must do is simply learn how to be in service to others. Learn how to show love, compassion, respect, and honor each other. Holding those vibrations all day long will lift you up. It'll, it'll raise you up and you'll keep shedding all the energies that are in your body that you need to shed and purge so that you can transform and change. Because in the fifth dimensional plane of existence, there's not going to be disease. It, it's, it's a totally different thing. Going to a crystalline body from a carbon-based body is a completely different existence. It's the existence that we saw when Christ returned in his light body. And, and we've seen it also with others as well for there are our masters and other traditions that have done this many of the yogis can and did materialize crystalline bodies 
of light, even when they were alive, they were able to basically bilocate. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi was seen by locating in two places at one time as well. And um, there, there are so many instances of all these things. And many times, reality is actually given to us through the movies a lot of times. It really is. And it's, it really is, is like they have to acknowledge some of what we call the secrets. They have to let us know a little bit of what's going on and then they could keep going ahead and trying to brainwash us and to try to keep us trapped in these lower vibrations. So we see things like that. Like if you saw the very last Star Wars, the, uh, the last Jedi, you saw what appeared to be Luke looking younger uh, fighting Kylo Ren, but he wasn't even there. He, he, was, he was bilocating. He was sending out an image of himself and, and there are yogis that can do that and have done that. Yogananda's teacher did that as well and Babaji who was the teacher of the teacher of you know the guru of the guru of Yogananda um, has done that as well and Babaji is is fascinating and if you guys really want to check out something that's interesting Babaji you look it up and you'll find that he is a master that has been in the Himalayas for thousands of years and uh, basically is like an ascended master that chooses to stay here amongst us. And so the ascended masters are another topic altogether, but basically on the same, same line. For when we ascend, then we are just totally different because we are embodying light and love. And that's really our destiny. It really is, is what it, we, we are here for. So the earth itself is going to split. There's going to be two timelines. There's going to be a 3D earth that goes through all these all these earth changes as things get tougher and tougher and tougher. And then a 5D earth that will not go through that. And where life is going to be very peaceful and very beautiful and harmonious. And so the split is coming. And many of you, are, I think, are sensing the split. And so it's time for us to really get right with ourselves. That There's nothing more important than that. And, you know, it's important to be prepared, stock up food, water, those type of things. But ultimately, it's all about where you are spiritually, where your heart is at, where, what emotions are you holding. And, and this family is a beautiful family, and I, I love watching you guys. You guys are amazing, the connectedness, the way you're pulling together and helping each other and really bonding together, it's so beautiful. And so, yeah, we want to escape the worst of it. And, and Christians will look at it and think the rapture. And yeah, that, that's definitely you know a thought for sure. But it's not that you have a certain dogma and, and you're going to be raptured. It, it's more about what your vibrations are. It's not about dogma because you could you could have that mindset and yet you could still steal from your neighbor. You could still get into a fight. You could still curse somebody or wish evil on somebody um, or look at people that need help with complete indifference and never help them and, and maintain that dogma. And, and that's not going to help you rise up and ascend at all. That's not going to help you at all. And you could have no dogma in your mind and basically be a, a great person that's always out doing things selflessly, helping others, lifting others up. And, and you are on the process of ascension. You are changing. You are actually, as was said, you must be born again. You are that born again because you've shed the ego self. And when we say born again, that's shedding the ego. And the ego is the lower nature. The nature that is all about just pleasures and gratifications without the love, without the compassion, without the peace, without the self-sacrifice. Very, very different things. So what exactly is 5D and how is it different from 3D? And how can we change? It's all about our vibratory rate. As we said before, quote in Tesla, think about vibration and frequency. And what changes our vibrations, our emotions? We are emotional beings, and emotions are so powerful. 
think about when you truly love somebody and how if you saw them in any sort of trouble how it just pulls at your heart and you want to run out there and you want to grab them and you want to hold them in your arms and you want to squeeze them and protect them and let them know how much you love them and would do anything for them anything at all to heal them from whatever it is they're suffering from to heal their mind to heal their body to heal their spirit you just want to comfort them and you just want to lift them up in any way possible well that emotion those feelings those emotions are what going are what is going to send you into that higher dimension it's it's the vibration of love compassion giving self-sacrifice at times it's 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 those vibrations so buddha buddha had everything he was a rich prince and his father kept from him the fact that there was any suffering in the world he never saw anybody that did not look perfectly healthy he experienced nothing negative everything was wonderful in his world and then one day he saw a beggar and this beggar was sickly and suffering and he was so struck with feelings of compassion that he could no longer go back to his life of luxury why should he be so lucky when there are people so suffering he thought so he gave it all up to try to figure out how could he get alleviate suffering in the world and so that is the path that, that he took and that's the path that we all must take whether we follow buddha or christ it's really the same path of love and peace compassion and working towards helping each other because when we get past this 3d world we, we start to really realize there is no separateness when you hurt somebody else you hurt yourself we feel it in this world as karma and karmic backlash but in reality you really are hurting yourself when you hurt somebody else you really are because ultimately we are all one we're all part of the same collective consciousness we are all experiencing this reality in a, in a slightly different way shape form body but we are all consciousness experiencing this reality this creation of consciousness so this realm is created by consciousness for consciousness in order to experience its own creation and that's the ultimate secret behind all this and that's that's one of the secrets that those in power know as well so we see a, a little diagram here of the unconscious and we see the 1d self cellular level minerals waters genetic codes 2d self biological matter lower brain Autotomic nervous system, unconsciousness, you know, 1D and 2D, 3D, physical body, ego consciousness, knowing the self, I am. And then 4D, astral bodies, higher human consciousness and, and unconsciousness. And then the 5D, the light body, keyword unity consciousness, keyword super consciousness. And that's where we are heading. So we are heading to an integrated reality of a greater gnosis a greater knowledge a greater understanding that is where we are going and so this article is on the transformation from carbon base to crystalline body part one and really it's talking about all the things i was just talking about and so this is something i'll let you guys read through but it's just explaining how what we are doing here is we're going to a, a life form that will be able to take in more light which is ultimately love and knowledge and we're, we're going to become greater holders of the light and don't fear the light see there are so many things that have been put into our religions that cause us to fear the things that we need the most and that is how they trap us and that is how they keep us here in the 3d and many of us are waking up and realizing this and this is part two and life in the mental planes in our crystal crystalline forms so i'll let you guys read through this as well it's you know it's a good read it's very interesting 
But the point I want to get across is it's all about shedding lower vibrational frequencies. Embrace the love. Embrace peace. Embrace compassion. Realize, all of us, we have been basically lied to. We have been basically kept in conditions to accept ourselves as, as much, much less than we truly are. For ultimately, you know, it, it's like... I want to say it, but just like the, the Hopi said, we are the ones we've been waiting for. When we read the stories of the gods, do you ever wonder why they're so human? When you read the Greek mythologies, and they still have jealousies, and they still have lust, and they still have all these things. Well, maybe it's because they're actually talking about us. You know, have you ever thought that potentially we are the gods? quote unquote. And of course there are the gods and then there's the source. And the source is different from, from the gods. Source is something that we cannot understand with our little material 3D brains. It's something that's much beyond our, our comprehension. It's limitless light, limitless knowledge. It's something that is, is beyond us at this level to understand. And so source itself is beyond our understanding. So the best way we can understand source is to think of it in a higher realm sense, but give it human tendencies and characteristics. And so again, like I share with you guys, when you see when you see Hollywood giving us all these superheroes now and these mythologies, and uh, you know we see Thor back and we see Loki back, and why do we see all this you know superheroes and the gods because we can relate to them and ultimately because you know we are the gods that's that's who we are we just forgot our power we just forgot our abilities we don't realize exactly what we are and what we can become and so it, as it is written in the bible Christ said it, and it's also written in the Old Testament. Ye are gods. Wake up to who you really are, and wake up to what you are supposed to embody. Wake up to the potential that you have, because ultimately we are going to go way past those that have held us down. Where we are going, they can't go. They just don't have it in them to go and, and to follow us. So they can't follow us to the higher realms. And we are going to rise up way past them. And that's a beautiful thing. For our destiny is a very, very bright one. And the future is whatever you want to make it. So realize that. Realize your power. Realize what lies inside you. As always, my friends, please thumbs up to support the channel. And do subscribe and click the bell if you haven't subscribed yet. And share, 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 because we have to wake up as many people as possible so that we will manifest the world that we deserve and that we want to create. A unified world of peace and harmony, brotherhood, sisterhood. We're going to get rid of this negative duality and we are going to ascend past the controllers where they cannot go. And we will know the true potential that lies within each of us. And I see that potential in you. Namaste. And namaste, that means exactly that. I see it within you. I see the divine within you. So namaste, my friends, and God bless.